Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on shaders. Now we're just going to be starting out with the very basics and we're going to be stepping through this a little bit at a time. I did want to do it all in one video, but that's not really going to work out. There's just too many nodes in the visual shader editor and that's what we're going to be focusing on. So I'm going to be doing it in single parts, the first one being over textures. Now I realize this may be treading old ground for a lot of you, but rest assured, soon enough we'll be getting on to more complicated subjects. If that sounds like your cup of tea, buckle up and let's get started. So first off, you'll notice we have a little scene here, nothing too complicated, with a little platform for the little test rig to stand on. And then on the sphere, we do have a little custom mesh called Basic Textures Material, which is of type Shader Material. And then we're just going to go ahead and drag our custom shader, Basic Textures, onto here. Now, Basic Textures doesn't currently do anything. And if you want to create one, you just go to Create New, Resource, and then type in Visual Shader and select that. So getting started, we can go ahead and create new nodes. We have a graph to work in here, and there's a lot of different options here, but we're going to stick to fragment and we're just going to stick to textures today. We'll go through each of the other options as they come up in various videos in the future. But starting out with the albedo, let's go ahead and create a new texture 2D node. You can do so by right clicking and then typing in texture into the prompt. And you can just select the texture 2D option here. Now, this in of itself does allow for selecting textures and noise and things like that. And if you drag it into the Albedo, you can even see if you select the material, see a shader parameter, text FRG2. And this can work, but it doesn't give you the full range of options. To get the full range of options, we're going to go ahead and set this setting up here to sampler port instead of any of these options. And that's going to tie into this little yellow node right here, which is of type sampler 2D. So if we go ahead and drag that out and let go, we'll get the option to create a new node and we're going to select a texture 2D parameter here. Now this has quite a lot of options and we're just going to start out by renaming it to Albedo. And for Albedo, we definitely want a type of color. If you don't select this, your texture will just look wrong and we can go ahead and leave that right there. Now under the shader parameters inside of the material, we now have Albedo and we can go ahead and drag in our Albedo texture and you'll see that go ahead and be applied to the mesh there. Now there's a couple things that we want to do before we continue. You'll notice that the color is kind of green and has some weird issues here. This is because the quality of the import is not set to the highest setting. So if we select all of our materials right here and we set import, set high quality to on and re-import, you'll notice that's cleaned up right away and the texture looks much better. Now back on the texture side of things, we have a couple options here that are of importance. First off, we have repeat, which we do want to set to enabled, which repeat just kind of handles the edges of the texture. If it is a repeat texture and you leave this to disabled, sometimes you get little weird artifacts on the edges of the texture, but we're just going to leave it to enabled because this looks like an environment asset and it would probably have repeat enabled. Now we do have some options over here with the UV and the LOD. The LOD is really simple. If we drag it out, we can type in float and we can create a new float parameter and we'll just call this LOD. And if we select it over here and set it to say one, you see it gets slightly blurrier on the texture. And if we set it to two and so on and so forth, this is stepping through the MIP maps, which are essentially a low res version of the texture. This is usually used for optimization, but you can override it here if you say wanted the texture to intentionally look blurry. Now inside of the shader editor, we're gonna go ahead and edit the UVs. And if we drag out from there, we can go ahead and modify it using a UV function. And in this case, we're gonna use the UV panning function. Now the panning function, despite its name, actually gives you the option for also scaling. So if we set it to scaling and just pull out the scale node here. We can drive this with a float constant and just set it to something like two. And you'll notice that the scale changes as we change this float constant. If it looks fairly low res, but if we set it up to say three, it's going to be scaling down the texture. So it makes it much smaller and it repeats three times around the mesh. So we can use this for modification, but if we set it to panning and we set the offset, we're going to create a vector compose node. And we're just going to set this to vector two. And then out of that, we're going to pull the Y axis and we're going to attach it to a time node. Now, all time really does is allow you to change things over time by giving a, a value that constantly increases. So if we just go ahead and add that in, you can see now the texture is blending upwards and it's going very fast. So you can go ahead and multiply this by some value like 0.2 or something. And that can be very handy for all sorts of effects. Now, moving on, we do want to go over normal map and roughness. So if we just select the texture 2D and the texture 2D parameter, we go ahead and copy that with control C and paste it with control V. We can do that twice for the normal map and for the roughness. Now you'll notice that the type has to be different on each one. So for the roughness, we're going to set it to data because we're just using a grayscale value. And then for the normal map, we're going to set it to normal map. Now we're going to be pulling this data out. We can go ahead and throw the normal map in and that's not going to do anything until we drag in a normal map. But for the roughness, 
this, we do want to multiply a control for this. So we're going to pull out the red as it is just grayscale. All the different channels are the same. We can go ahead and pull that out, use a multiply node, and we're going to pull out of the B option in the multiply node and create a new float parameter, which we're going to call roughness power. And we can drag in the output of that into the roughness option. Roughness power now controls the roughness without even having a texture. And you can see how this controls how sharp or how soft the object looks. So a sharper object would look more like marble or something, whereas soft would look more like stone. Now we can go ahead and drag in our textures here. We can pull in the normal map as well as the roughness. And those look fine, but they aren't panning. And that's because we haven't attached the UVs. So if we go ahead and drag that down from the top, we can attach up the UV for each of those. And now it's moving upwards. And we have a fair bit of control here on the roughness. Now, the last thing I am going to go over is how to control the normal map power. So if we go ahead and duplicate the roughness power, and we'll just rename that normal map power. And we'll, instead of multiplying it with the normal map, we're going to drag that into the normal map depth option. Now it's going to kind of reset things, but if we go ahead and set it back to one, it will go ahead and control the normal map power. And if we increase that, the normal map is going to look more defined and more defined. And if we decrease that, we can actually soften things up and make it a softer stone. Now, one more thing on float values. If you go ahead and select, say, the LOD over here, and we go down to the different options, we have a couple options here. As you can see, I went ahead and tied it up with everything, but LODs don't really work outside of zero to 10. So we can go to the hint and select the range plus step with a step of one. So that way it can only ever be between those values and it is only in steps of one. So if we go ahead and select the material, you can now see LOD can be stepped up, but it's not really outside of that range. You can't step it outside of that range or even enter something that's in Right. It'll just reset. That's a useful tip for when you want variables that are within reason staying within a range. And that'll be it for today. The links to all of the documentation for everything as well as the GitHub for this project is in the description. As always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.